Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another video from the Thrift Store Prepper or episode if you prefer, whichever works for you, it doesn't really matter. But here we are, it's another week gone by and it's time for another recipe. Um, but before we dive into today's recipe, let's have a little look back over the the last week and um, if you recall it was around this time last week, actually it was... Uh, Last Tuesday, not last Monday, but last Tuesday I had my uh, one and only day off of the week and it was a milestone week for me. I had, um, you know, as you should know by now, we reached the 50 subscribers, a video made it past um, 100 views and I also made my 50th video. Um, and in the week since then, the good times continue to roll. Um, we've got more subscribers coming. I think over the last week we have 12 um before we hit the 50 and up until today, we've had 12 or 14 new subscribers. So welcome. Thank you for for subbing and thank you for watching my videos. Um, and some stuff I've been hearing a little bit is people looking for advice in um, how to, uh, you know, maybe make meals from their preps. And, you know, if you have a micro pantry like myself, then you're going to have a lot of the same items over, um, in there and you're going to get you know, have to be eating the same things over and over again. So a little bit why, you know, I do these recipes is kind of to show you how I can make stuff that is different from the preps that I have. And even though they may be the same exact items, using a couple of little tweaks and twists here and there, we can make something completely different. But um, again, before we dive into this video, continuing on the uh, talking about the last week that we've had um so we have some new subscribers we have some new people to the facebook group also and we got another few milestones this week i actually had a video it was funnily enough the 50th um video special edition that got over 50 likes in a week and that's the first time it happened to me um and another thing that also a milestone that I passed, that all the videos that I did upload last week combined got over 200 likes. So it seems that the thrift store prepper is actually producing some content that a few smart and selected people are choosing to, to watch and maybe influence a little bit uh, their ways about they go about prepping. So, um... As I said, welcome, welcome to the new people. Welcome, as always, to those that have been here from the beginning. And today's recipe is another thrift store original ramen recipe. So we're going to start out with another box of the hot and spicy fancy. And we used one of these last week and it had a couple of um, different things to the normal ramen. But the ramen noodles themselves, as we did mention before last video, was exactly the same as the ones you'd buy in any packet as these here is the ones that I get for the Dollarama or the ones you will find in your local store so I think we had the same problem last time with opening it and dear god it's causing problems this isn't shouldn't be this hard to get into There, have we? No, we haven't. We just go from the other side, and that was almost easy when we come in from the other side. Sometimes you get access denied on the front entrance, so sometimes you have to go and get in the back. So, you should know the drill. We crush the ramen noodles. Um, as you know, we use ramen noodles in nearly all of our recipes, and a lot of these recipes are influenced from prison cooking and prison recipes, and I'm sure you've seen our prison recipe um, playlist. Now, not only is ramen used in prison and jail houses in North America for almost all of its inmate cooking, and this isn't stuff that you're going to get in the chow hall, this is stuff that you're going to be buying on commissary, and this is how you're going to supplement your diet. And nearly all prison recipes will start with a ramen noodle in them. And you'd be absolutely surprised at the things that you can do with a ramen noodle. And one thing you probably don't realize, unless you have served some time in a North American uh, correctional facility, is that ramen noodle is actually currency. 
on the inside. In the days before smoking was outlawed and prohibited in um, public buildings and private buildings and such forth, um, tobacco was how inmates would trade and buy contraband or pay for services, you know, such forth. But nowadays, the ramen noodle has replaced tobacco as a form of currency. Now, it's, there are many forms of currency, but the, the if you think of the ramen noodle as your dollar bill, um, other things that will be used are tuna pouches, maybe a chili pouch, or coffee as other commodities, but the, for the most part, 75% of the time your uh, your ramen noodles are going to be what you use to pay for um, maybe you want to get yourself a pick and poke jailhouse tattoo and uh, there's a local artist in the in the in the dorm so two or three soups may get you a nice pick and poke uh, tattoo and a staph infection um, if you want to buy drugs uh, either narcotics or the drugs that are given to the inmates as meds um, it's going to be with a ramen noodle if you're going to want somebody shanked from the rival gang then depending on who you're paying to do the shanking if it's a young lackey looking to make his way into the um, into the prison gang maybe a couple of ramen noodles and a honey bun which is known as a white girl in a in jail if you uh, wanted to know will be enough to get the job done so ramen noodle is a form of currency on the inside and who knows maybe in the shit hitting the fan um, scenario ramen noodle once again will be a currency on the outside but ramen noodle for me is kind of a go-to stable item to be having I prefer it much, much more than rice. Uh, you can eat it raw, straight from the packet. It doesn't take much to rehydrate it. Um, you only need a little bit of water. And we've shown you ways using coconut water and other things that you can hydrate this. So we've got this crushed down as small as we can. Now the other thing we're gonna be throwing in there is an item for my prepping pantry. Um, is gonna be one of these home style Mexican Mexican salsa mixes. Now these are a buck a piece. Actually, they're ninety nine cents. Now they don't really contain much other than some iron and a little bit of vitamin C. Um, so. For a 30 mil, mil serving, you get 20% um, iron and 4% vitamin C and not really much else, some sodium, which isn't particularly good. So um, it's really more for flavor and it's also got a little bit of liquid in it and a little bit of veggies. So that's going to go in. Just dumping it straight in there and... As you can see, there's nothing really fancy going on. And I've got a little plastic fork here. Let's get that out because we're going to kind of want to mix this up a little bit. So you could possibly over time hydrate this just in the salsa itself. But um, we are going to be adding something else right now that's going to make this ramen dish a little bit healthy um, by no terms or by no means this is a healthy dish but this is something I picked up it's a little tiny can of V8 and something I guess mums would put in kids lunch packs or, or husband's um, lunch box for work perhaps but um, it's got a one serving of um, veggies in this can and the can size is going to give us 60% of our daily um, vitamin C. It's going to give us some calcium and some iron and it's also going to give us a good portion of potassium. It's going to add some carbs. Um, so it's a pretty good, it's not exactly fortifying the dish, but it's certainly put in uh, a lot of nutrients and a lot of goodness or a little bit of goodness in a very small slice. So in goes our V8. And this is going to be eventually kind of a Mexican style 
stew I suppose that you can eat straight from the bowl or you could pop it in the microwave and heat it up and there's a good chance that I will do that afterwards but again the other point of, uh, point of uh, making it like this is to show you that you can cook it without any need or requirements from a uh, modern kitchen or even you know boiling water so you can just use the can and water from the tap if you need to and in this case we've just used the liquid from the salsa and a little can of v8 so again this does have a lot of sodium in um you probably shouldn't use all of it but i am going to use all of it because i kind of like this flavor the chili and the lime is a very good spicy chicken flavor so that's going in um and if you remember from the last packet we had some green stuff and some little dried pieces of corn so green stuff and corn sometimes can be seen in um mexican dishes so there's our green stuff and corn then you know we've got a little bit of tomato some jalapeno some onion and our ramen now you could just leave it at that and then certainly if you were you know a vegetarian then there's a a vegetarian dish for you um i'm not even sure if this would qualify as a vegan friendly meal but it's a meal that you could make so you know this is the fancy ramen and this does cost a dollar which uh, is an expensive way of buying your ramen for just a couple of extra things like this which you could potentially have in your pantry or you know if you save your fast food or take out uh condiments then you, you may have them lying around in your home but it also does give you a bowl to eat out of and um did i make this big enough i probably didn't know and didn't do that right last time either so let's try again from the other side and see if we have better luck and if you remember this didn't look too special last time it kind of looked a little bit like something you would need your igg bag for um but it's a chili paste, and uh, it's going to add a little bit more flavor. And, ooh, I got a little bit on my tongue from opening it with my teeth, and it does have a little kick. So, just for good measures, talking of kick, we're going to add a little bit of Frank's Red Hot, because, you know, we've got to put that shit on everything. So we'll put a good portion of Red Hot in there. And you know what else we're going to do that I forgot to get out of the pantry? But I grab it because it's just a short distance away. And if I don't drop it, which I did, is a little squirt of our lime. That's going to give us an even more of a Mexican flavor. Now, there really is a lot of flavoring and seasoning going on in here without really needing to be adding salt, pepper, or any other other seasonings but you know this is to taste if you really really did like it spicy then you could add some of those little chili flakes you sometimes get with your pizza um or really much anything you want now we haven't finished there we are going to add one more item and that's going to be a little portion a little can rather of uh, the hot and spicy sausages now we did chop them up last time um and we might even do that again this time, but we're going to pour the extra juice in there because that's all flavor. And I'm sure people are cringing at this thing. And, oh, my God, that looks disgusting. How is he going to eat that? But trust, you have to believe me that sometimes these things actually taste a lot better than than they look at the, the, the making stage. And that can be said for a lot of dishes. If you broke down the ingredients of Caesar salad and displayed them as individual items for people to eat as a meal, trust me, they would be turning their nose up at raw anchovies and raw garlic and raw eggs. So we're going to use this little lid from a takeout container as our cutting board. And there's a little bit of jelly on there. And we're going to use the lid like we did before as our knife so i'm just going to chop these very very safely so we don't get any chopped off fingers and um i actually prefer these little uh chicken vienna sausages to the um 
the regular pork ones or beef ones. Um, and they kind of have a little bit more of a frankfurty, frankfurter or a wiener texture than um, the other Vienna sausage, which kind of has that kind of soft bologna kind of thing going on. Not to say it's not nice, but uh, these ones are a little bit better. Let's just cut that piece in half. So there you go. We've used a plastic fork and a lid as the only implements to uh, to cook or utensils rather to cook. So now we've done those, we're just going to pop that into the stew. So mix it all up together. Make sure we get a little bit of everything going on. And that's pretty much all, you, all you've got to do. So we're going to leave the fork in it. We're going to clear up the candies that we don't need. And wait for that to hydrate. Now, I mean, I could even stop the video, go upstairs and microwave it at this point, And that would only take a couple of minutes. Um, but, you know, if you have been watching the thrift store prepper videos before, recipe videos before, I should say, you know, there's absolutely no need to be microwaving this or no need to be boiling it. But that being said, if you did empty all of these ingredients as we have into a saucepan and heated it on the stovetop, you would get the same effect. But another reason for doing this, like, the, um, you know, the, the way that we do it without any cooking, without any kitchen is, you know, people sometimes who are living on low income and don't have much money to buy, um food and are on a rom in the night kind of uh, lifestyle may not even have the you know the money available to spend on electricity so certainly using um, things like microwaves and stove tops to make just one meal for one person can add to 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 the cost of living so this is is a good alternative that um could save you a few bucks you know and again if the power goes out or you're living in the back of a van and you know you kind of do have a little bit of a propane heating system or, or some way of, of heating food or cooking on um but you really don't want to be using that this is again something you can knock up in the back of the van or if you wanted to raise some eyebrows and turn some heads on the train you could do this on a train or a bus as you're on your way to work or on your way home from work so it's very easy to do um you don't need any really cooking experience to uh do this you know you don't have to, don't have to be a chef or michelin star or red seal or anything like that just to dump some stuff into a bowl um so it is going to take a little time to hydrate as uh, none of these items normally we use very hot water from the tap and that, uh, that kind of speeds up the process a little bit. Um, so I might even go and throw this in the microwave to see how it turns out and uh, then enjoy it for my supper. So you know what, I am going to do that. Okay, so I'm back from my microwaving, and um, I put this in for 2 minutes and 40 seconds, um, and it is bubbling quite a way, and uh, I don't know if there's any steam coming off it, but let's have a little look inside. So, it's kind of difficult doing this through the camera lens, but as you can see... It looks pretty much exactly the same as it did before it went in, but it is now very hot. And uh, we've got our little um, sausages going in there. We've got our ramen noodle, this nice and soft. And we've got those little pieces of yellow corn and some green stuff. So let's give it the taste test. See how that is. Wow. I have to admit... That's pretty damn good. Now, the V8 certainly gives it that nice tomato-y um, soup kind of flavor. And the smell coming off it is is very, very similar to kind of a kind of Campbell's or Heinz soup. Um, but you certainly got the spice going on. There's a little kick from the chili. Not too overpowering. 
um, you got the spice of the uh, Vienna sausage, and then we got the gooey goodness of the ramen noodles. So this is a pretty decent meal, as it happens. And uh, actually, could have probably done with a couple of minutes longer. It's still a little bit. I mean, it's hot in some places, but a little bit warm. So maybe if we stir it and get the hot parts mixed in with the cooler parts. Oh yeah, there is definitely a kick to that. Um, so this is a pretty decent meal, and uh, very similar to last week. We used two of the same ingredients. We used the Vienna sausage last week in the Asian kind of style dish, and we used the same hot and spicy ramen soup. But that time, we, you know, we used some pineapple juice, some coconuts, and uh, we give it a little bit of an Asian um, Asian theme or an Asian twist or fusion, whichever you'd like. And on this one, as I say, we've got a little bit of a maybe a southwestern or Mexican kind of flavoring going on. And certainly this is going to fill you up. And with the addition of the um, the V8, it's it's going to give you a, a little bit more than just filling you up. It's going to give you a few of your um, nutrients, uh, nutrients rather, and uh, certainly isn't going to be the worst thing you can eat. On the downside, there is a lot of sodium with the the seasoning that we use the whole entire packet. But again, you know that's up to your own discretion. If you were to replicate this dish or use ramen in general, maybe only use half the seasoning packet or even a quarter if you're trying to reduce sodium but you know this is a little bit of a guilty treat for me from the week so uh i don't really care too much it's a one-off thing it's not like i'm eating this every day but if i was in the situation where i was eating it every day and water was a little bit of a an issue on supply then i would certainly be reducing the amount of the seasoning i use and maybe not even using it at all so I'd have to say this is a pretty good meal um, and again it's something that you can make out of your preps it's a way of making something that tastes different to the way it should be um, so not really much more I can say about this it was a pretty low cost meal um, if you didn't use this fancy ramen maybe it comes in around $2.50 um, total so not much I can say about that. I think I possibly will go and toss it in the microwave for another couple of minutes after I stop the the um, the video. But it's not essential. As I said, you can eat it cold if you need to or if you choose to. Entirely up to you. So that's a pretty good um, nutritional meal going on there for not very much, much bucks used from things in our prepping item. And we've given ourselves a little bit of a different theme we've been to asia last week this week central america so time for some bonus footage people if you can recall last week's video where we used similar items to make um our 50 50 feast there were three dishes now um i managed to eat the ramen and the oatmeal because they were both kind of pretty packed with um nutrients and we used the fortified soy beverage and some of the coconut milk to, to make the oatmeal and um we put a little bit also into the ramen and if you remember i put some we had some leftover coconut milk we had leftover pineapples and we had a little bit of the uh in adding a little bit of the soya milk we made a creamy coconut pineapple dessert well unfortunately i couldn't eat it all or I certainly couldn't eat everything in the one serving last time and um I went upstairs and I put the pineapples in the freezer and kind of forgot them about them for a couple of days until only today in fact when I looked in there to see what was going on and I found them and I inadvertently have made pineapple coconut ice cream with oatmeal uh, I'm gonna give it a taste test um, so it has melted a little bit, um, but there is a little bit still that's almost frozen. Um, so here we go. Bon appetit. And oh, wow. Dang. That's a very, very, oh, my word. Well, there you go. That's how you can make yourself um, homemade pineapple and coconut ice cream. And if you want to know how... You're going to have to watch the 50-50 video if you haven't already watched it. 
So there you go. That was another um, thrift store prepper original ramen recipe where we showed you using just a couple of cheap in um, small items from your prepper pantry or your micro pantry if you're choosing to go that route, um, like myself. Um, we've made ourselves a pretty decent meal. Um, and obviously with the leftovers we had from last week that we had in the the freezer, we've got a nice dessert going on. And I was actually going to make a, a dessert to go with this meal, but seeing as I have this and don't want to waste another one and maybe save some video content for another day, we're going to make do with the pineapple coconut ice cream. Actually, the pineapple coconut oatmeal ice cream as our dessert. And this, again, because of the um, fortified soy beverage we used in it, is giving us a hell of a lot of our daily nutrition. So really and truly, these two dishes, although they look kind of gross, taste pretty damn good and are going to be giving us quite a lot of our daily requirements for our dietary needs. So smart smart dishes to be eating and you know maybe you can take your take a little bit of influence of these and pimp them and twist them to your own tastes and likings and um you know if you do do that please be sharing your content to the facebook group um and that's another thing in the last week that did start to show a little spark of life we had a few people posting whereas um they didn't before and uh some good interaction and some good information shared so thank you for the, um, the people on facebook for starting to get the the gears of that rolling and you know maybe using the momentum then the good uh good vibes that we've got going on this this thrift store prepper channel um and we're getting a little bit of a growing audience or should i say community of thrifty or frugal preppers that are watching my content i gotta say you know things things I uh, certainly looking good and definitely, you know, compared to the days when six people were watching these videos, it's starting to get a, uh, get to where I wanted it to be or kind of where I envisioned it to be. You know, we're getting people did um, one comment that I did have last week from the um, 50th video special edition was along the lines that the reason that they enjoy watching my video, that the viewer enjoyed watching my videos is because it's real things that real people who don't make much money can actually do and you know that actually meant an awful lot to me because that is what I'm trying to convey here it's not to be about being cool or trying to make videos that are going to get viral or get monetized or get millions and millions of watches it's about showing people who may be in a similar boat to myself not making much money living in a small space how you can kind of stretch your buck a little bit further now you know, we do use the prison ramen technique for, for cooking here. And in prison, um, this would be referred to as spread. And I guess the term, I don't know the actual origin or, or where the word spread come from, but I'm guessing it is to spread as little as you have as far as it can go. And believe you me, the amount of recipes that some of these prisoners come up with, with their... Um, with their for their ramen is off the hook and if there's something you're interested in maybe go to youtube and in, in, in search for some prison rest ramen recipes of your own in fact there's even a guy a former inmate who served a lot of time in um the la correctional facilities um called derek alvarez i believe um i think that's his name i i certainly know his second name is alvarez but he's pretty um, when he got out of prison he actually produced his own cookbook called prison ramen um, and he also has a youtube channel of his own that you might want to check out but he has plenty of subscribers unlike me so you don't really need to be subscribing to his channel but you know these are more um they just demonstrate more ways that you can use ramen that you may not have thought of before and you know you can do so much more of it than it than just making it as the soup and certainly using um my cook and uh, my cooking knowledge and my cooking skills from from doing it professionally i try to come up with some prison style recipes that you can make with ingredients that you can get on the end outside unlike um in prison and ways that you can make very inexpensive somewhat healthy somewhat nutritious very filling meals for very very little amount of money without having to cook at all so 
Thanks for watching. This has been a ship video production for the thrift store prepper and we'll see you next time.